Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today we have uh, Pooja Kumari here. So Pooja is currently doing PhD from North Dakota State University. And this is the eighth video in the series where we are talking with different students who have done master's, PhD, or currently working in different agricultural institute in the US. And we will talk more with Pooja, like what her background was and what she's currently working on. So that this is helpful for the future students who are planning to come abroad. So with that, so thanks a lot, Pooja, for coming to the channel. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for inviting, Karen. Uh, yeah, as Karen mentioned, I'm uh, now technically third year PhD student at North Dakota State University. And uh, I am doing PhD in uh, genomics, phenomics, and bioinformatics. It is a kind of interdisciplinary program. And with, but my, the home department is plant sciences. So my research will be more focused on plant research. And uh, I, right now I am doing some uh, host pathogen genetics or in wheat i like am studying about disease and another some of my project that i can say my specialization is in like predictive modeling of uh, polio disease in wheat so i'm doing some modeling stuff using uav data phenomics data right now Okay, uh, yeah. thanks for sharing this, uh, what you are currently working on. So, when we were talking about it, you were telling me that you have done India from undergrad and you have done a master's from India. Most of the time, I have seen that students directly master's, but when you have done a master's from India, is it easy to do a PhD transition? Is it easy or is it tough? If you can share that experience, and if you can tell me where you have done a master's from undergrad. Yeah, that, that's actually a great question, Karan, because right now you see people are coming direct to PhD from undergrad and it's it's in trend in like in uh, US and sometimes you see a professor who opens the position of PhD, they don't really mention that they need masters. So uh, this is quite in trend now, but since I did masters from India, I would say it, it 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 is helpful to me when I came to PhD since there is you know a lot of transition in the kind of research we do here and the kind of research we do back in India. So yeah, that was helpful for me uh, rather than coming direct to PhD uh, uh, from undergrad. So my masters have OP, you say yeah, or many wahan pe bhi wheat pe hi research kari thi. Like I I was working on some diseases like I I mentioned right now I'm also working on host pathogen resistance and uh, and I too worked on like host pathogen back in India in my master's. So that part of research was uh, very helpful to me when I handed over the project of host pathogen in PhD here. So uh, I would say if you have master that is beneficial in the sense that you know how to write a proposal because when you come to US, you do PhD, you are kind of leading your PhD. So you have to write your own proposal. And if you have a prior experience in research, I think that is very helpful. So yeah, if you have a master, feel confident to apply for a PhD, that is helpful. But if you're lucky enough, first thing is you should be lucky enough to get a PhD direct from UG because that's, uh, you should be outstanding in like a lot more things. Like you should have an outstanding CV, some publications, you know, how hard it is to get in grad school uh, nowadays. So. Even if you have UG, like I, I know you just have UG and you just came direct to PhD, right, Karen? That's, yeah, that's yeah, your case. I, I, so yeah, I, uh, I know people do that. Yeah, it's and even, uh, yeah, I know a couple of uh, my friends who are doing this. So, yeah, even if you get an opportunity to get directly into PhD, grab that. But mm. but it's just you have to work hard initially because yeah, thanks for sharing this. And uh, we already made this video separately on this topic whether we should come directly for a PhD or do a masters. And masters, more people still yeah. more people still feel yeah. like masters is a good route. You yeah, masters, you, you, set, you you settle here. You learn how the work culture is, how to do the mm. research, and you really understand whether you are fit for a PhD as well. So it depends yeah. upon the person's opinion. Person, so, yeah, thank yeah. you. And then another follow up I have is like you you have uh, you done your masters from India, and then yep. you started applying abroad. Do you mm -hmm. think uh, what oh, so maybe do you think your CV was competitive enough that you can compete with the people who are doing masters in the US and competing for PhD positions? So what extra work you 
you did you, during your master so that you are competitive enough to get a secure position in NDS. You so if you can just help that with the students. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that's an excellent question, and that's the exactly same question I was asked when I was hired as a PhD student. And my PA asked me why we should hire you. Like explain mm -hmm. me because we do have excellent candidate from US and also from other part of the world. You know, it's just you know one one PhD position that open in three years and it's it's a long term commitment. Mm -hmm. So what I feel I was good at is like I applied for wheat breeding position and I was doing wheat breeding back in masters. So the the alignment of my research interest with the PI I applied. That was that was most helpful to me. And first thing, second thing uh, is like you. Of course, you should have some publication. That is important because if you don't have any publication, like you, how can a PI those hiring you should believe? Okay, you are a good candidate for PhD because they are you know investing next three or four years in you. So mm -hmm. they should be confident, and you should have a really just a really good score of you know. Uh, GRE TOEFL, though most universities say that it's not required, but it's mm. recommended, but I would suggest to have that. So have a good that score, do have some publication, present, uh, present in conferences, present in uh, wherever you get a chance, poster present, and get yourself involved with the with the lab activities, like with, so I work back in, uh, like in um, master's, I worked in a breeding lab, wheat breeding lab at PAU, and uh, they're really good. Like they're known for their genetics research. So, no, be familiar with all the breeding techniques, experimental design. Be you know that my my whole point is like, if just align yourself with what what interests you. If you're going somewhere that doesn't interest you, you're going to have really hard time in US, especially mm -hmm. in PhD. You know, it's 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 very important. Like I love wheat, I love wheat genetics. Like I loved it from the very first day. I know that I'm going to do that. So that was the the kind of uh, passion, or I can say, the enthusiasm I had for wheat that helped me to kind of you know, ace the interview. And mm. uh, yeah, and, and yeah, they will ask you uh, questions like why we should hire you. And how are you, you know, in the, when you do PhD here, you have to deal with a lot of people. You have to deal with mm -hmm. farmers. You have to deal with industry people. You have to deal with people from other universities, your colleagues. So uh, that that is important. Uh, I mean, they will ask you. So you should come something in your CV which shows you are good with people too. You, you can have, a, like, you can be involved in some camps, like, uh, NCC camp where you interact okay. with a lot of people, have a good communication skill as well. That helps because in breeding, it's you know, you have to deal with a lot of people all the time. So, yeah, make your CV good, have a research aligned with your master research in the PhD, have some publication. Yeah, be and be good in other co curricular activities as well. I would say participate in some games and all these things. I think that matter that not matter a lot, but to some it extent helps. they see okay, how active you are. That that yeah. matter. Right? Yeah. yeah. So yes. Like, like how many okay. things you can actively get involved yeah. and accomplish all those. I feel like yeah, I yeah. definitely help on your C V. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the follow up I have on this is like you uh, you told uh Kiapne Masters may be pick on Kia or up same he come up PhD pick up but Anji. and starting with like what you are lucky enough so same thing i Anji. would say here ki everyone is not lucky enough to get the phd in the same stream you have done in the masters uh -huh. so mm -hmm. what will be the suggestion to those students ki mm -hmm. you should narrowly focus on those lab labs jin pe mm -hmm. apne masters ki so phd mil jaye or they should have a broad vision so for example apne wheat pe kaam ki apne breeding pe kaam mm. ki apne disease mm. pathogen interaction should those students just focus on wheat or they can try corn pathogen or like what your suggestion for them ha ha bilkul sahi baat hai so as i mentioned if you're lucky enough you get a mm. opportunity jaise aapne bol but nahi hota most of the time yeah. <laughs> but the good thing about us is ki it is full of opportunities mm -hmm. right but when you do masters, you get that skill set which can help you survive in other areas too. So special, I will talk about plant breeding. So when you work in 
plant breeding. It doesn't matter you work in wheat, rice, maize, anyway. You you know some things like you know how experiment is designed. You know how uh, a breeding procedure works. And you know, uh, like if you're working in a molecular lab, you know how to do PCR. You know how to do the molecular stuff and all these things. So it is important to have a skill set if you're applying in different area. Suppose uh, if I talk about breeding right now, you know, the most of breeding programs in uh, in the universities right now are doing genomic selection, big data, they're using uh, UAV data. So this is trend right now in US. And you that means that you should have skills that you should be good, at least in one language, be good at mm -hmm. R, be, be a little bit good at coding. Uh, because if you're not, then uh, you cannot really survive the things. Yes. This is what it's going. So that's the mm. skill set you can acquire in working in any different arena. Like it's not like you should be okay. If you're in wheat breeding, you can only be hired to you know the same wheat breeding. No, but if you acquire the skill set, uh, I am sure that you will get out of the position too. So yeah, got yeah. I think having yeah. those transferable skill set which you can transfer in any lab or yeah. any job you're going i think that will be really helpful and it will pay yeah. in your long run as well if you're becoming yeah. a pi in future as well yeah yeah okay so another question i have for you is like uh uh jab aap india mein masters karte ho kai baar 2 saal ki ho jati hai kai baar 3 mm -hmm. ki chale, chale jati hai undergrad humme pata hota hai ki 4 saal ki undergrad hai थर्ड ईयर के एंड पे जब फोर्थ ईयर की स्टार्टिंग में हमने प्रोफेसर को ईमेल करना है जब एप्लीकेशन सबमिट करनी है तो मास्टर्स में कब करनी चाहिए आपको क्या लगता है कि कब स्टूडेंट शुड स्टार्ट टीचिंग आउट टू प्रोफेसर सो दैट आपका गैप ना पड़े मास्टर्स के बाद like getting a phd position applying this is very exhausting and overwhelming yeah. process kai bar professor ko email karte hai you mm -hmm. you sometimes i i know some people who have email at least 100 of emails thousand of emails still not yeah. reply to ye ye bahut hi zyada tiring process hai mm -hmm. so main yahi kahungi what i did is i started applying early i i started yeah. applying a, a year before so mm -hmm. us mein aapko waise pata hai ki deadlines bahut pehle hoti hain mm -hmm. universities not like our india ki chalo abhi hai to ab last date pe apply kar denge to mil jayega nahi so mm -hmm. if you are applying in fall to mostly universities ki deadline fab to and ho jaati hai assistantship ke liye mostly but mm -hmm. for phd the direct approach is ki you should first contact the professor just do not apply directly to mm -hmm. start applying as early as you can when when uh, uh, you are working in a project you know ki aapko kahan jana hai किस लैब में जाना है ट्विटर फॉलो करे जिस प्रोफेसर के पास आपने जाना है तो देखे कि या कि उनके पास आ रही है पीएचडी की नहीं आ रही है पीएचडी की पोजीशन ऐसे नहीं कि पीएचडी पोजीशन ही नहीं है आप ईमेल किए जा रहे हो तो यू शुड बी वेरी यू नो अप टू डेट कि ओके अब इस लैब में पोजिशन आने वाली इसमें आ सकती है सो स्टे इन कॉन्टेक्ट विद द प्रोफेसर और द लैब यू आर इंटरेस्टेड इन सी की ओके दिस इज इवन इफ यू आर नॉट डन विद योर है published anything you can still be in contact uh, write them an email and uh, yeah so at least better uh, start a year before and just yeah for good but uh, also can what i have seen recently that that professor talk with each other or they come mm -hmm. to us and say that they have emails template like which are you know from chat gpt I, and they are just copied paste to Uh, all the professor and they talk these things so i would say when you email email it very carefully curate it according to the professor mm -hmm. not like just write it from the chat gpt and uh, like this no just be very thoughtful what you are writing and whom you are contacting so that, i think okay. that that would help yeah Sure. Yeah, I think it will be really helpful for the student because with this yeah. AI tools, sometimes we don't yeah. know how to use those wisely. So it's better to be careful yeah. if you're using those. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, professor, they are very smart. They're yeah, they're yeah. boss. They know. They they can yeah. figure it out. Okay, this is Chad GPT. This is you know someone did efforts. So do some efforts in writing the emails and frame yeah. it well and all these things. It is it is important how we are approaching a professor. Yeah. Got it. And then another thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Please go ahead. <laughs> no, yeah, you can finish it. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Another thing is like just when you prepare your CV and your statement of purpose, just uh, just evaluate it from the student, those who you know already in some positions or or some uh, someone like who are in you know and already in the US doing some jobs and 
already here so that way they can tell the difference how which which like so we can stand out compared to others because we are not used to these things back in india so the these things matter a lot like evaluate your cv sop and email it well and just try to be contact with the professor got it got it yeah चल एक एक और क्वेश्चन था कि जैसे आप डायरेक्ट आप पीएचडी करने आए आप मास्टर्स करने नहीं आए यूएस तो आपने कब डिसाइड किया कि आप अब्रॉड जाना चाहते हो और वहां से स्टडी करना चाहते हो कि आपने लेट सोचा था या फिर आपने सोचा था कि नहीं पहले मास्टर्स करूंगी फिर देखूंगी इफ एनीथिंग यू कैन शेयर ऑन दिस या 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 आई कैन आई कैन सो I did my UG. I don't know if I mentioned it. I did my yeah. UG through ICR, that is an Indian mm. Council of Agricultural Research. And the only thing I like about ICR is that research part. Yeah. So I know, <laughs> I know that I am interested in research. And at the end of like four year in UG, I know I'm too much into the genetics. Mm. So that's why. And someone doing really great work in genetics is like PAU or IRI. So I somehow managed to be at PAU. and then i did research and then i realized okay i want to do research i want to do some quality research and i want to explore other opportunity outside you know outside india I know what these guys are doing how can i implement those in my research and 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 that's the time i decided okay i want to explore a little bit i want to spread my wings i want to go to us and uh, and it sounds promising so yeah that's why i decided to come to us lot it lot of it is because of you know i like the professor research which mm-hmm. i am working right now and uh, he is a really good geneticist so i was totally into his research and then yeah, i decided yeah. okay i'm going to do phd with this guy if i get the opportunity and uh, yeah this things okay okay yeah, i think like, like good you got a uh, phd with the same professor you are following yeah. so uh, definitely that's a good good thing So the last question mm-hmm. I, ha- I have is like say aapne bola tha starting mein you are doing phd in genomics phenomics and genomics and bioinformatics and yeah. bioinformatics so just so teen things aap kaam kar rahe ho and i think these three are the pretty hot topics in the us currently yeah. so agar koi student in any fields mein aake study karna cha raha hai to undergrad ya masters mein kya kya skill set hai जो अक्वायर करके आए एटलीस्ट दे शुड बी फेमिलियर विद अगर आप थोड़ा सा आइडिया दे दो उसके बारे में यस यस सो माय प्रोग्राम इज लाइक थ्री थिंग्स जीनोमिक्स फिनोमिक्स एंड बायोइनफॉर्मेटिक्स बट यू कैन मेजर इन टू ऑफ देम लाइक टुगेदर आइदर यू कैन गेट जीनोमिक्स बायोइनफॉर्मेटिक्स यू कैन गेट फिनोमिक्स अलोन एंड यू कैन आल्सो गेट बायोइनफॉर्मेटिक्स अलोन सो सपोज यू हैव एन रियली गुड एक्सपीरियंस विद बायोइनफॉर्मेटिक्स सो यू हैव योर अंडरग्रेड इन सम uh i would say computer science thing and you mm-hmm. did some bioinformatics stuff and develop some project you can apply to bioinformatics alone okay i would just want to do the bioinformatics but if you have something skills that similar to doing the uav data stuff or some uh, robotics data stuff which mm-hmm. uh which which is not that common back in india yeah. currently yeah. like people are not doing that much research it is relatively a new field here as well uh so if you, but if you have little bit skill set related to that uh, you have good coding experience you can apply to phenomics uh, only uh, and if you have worked in wet lab for a while and you have a skill set like like he did some genomics stuff and all these things you can just apply to genomics and bioinformatics only so it totally depend on what kind of skill set you have yeah got it okay so then that makes sense so again doing yeah. all three things will be a little difficult if you want yeah. to get all the skill set but after coming here you can take multiple courses and get familiar with the things yeah 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 in in us i mean that's a kind of freedom we get we can literally be in any will we want to be like if you're mm. just interested in genetics you can just get into the genetics but if you're kind of want to do some cool stuff or big data thing you can really go into the phenomics stuff and all this thing so yeah got it. thanks for sharing this so i hope it will be really helpful for the students who are planning to come here to do masters or a phd in plant breeding genetics or a similar field so once again mm. thanks a lot for your time and thanks for coming to the channel yeah thank you garen yeah thank yeah. you for inviting yeah. and i hope it's helpful to someone watching this and yeah if uh, anyone have any question maybe contact yeah. to the and somehow we can get to me and i will reply back so 
Ja. Men vi gre- 